what is going on guys name is here bringing you guys a brand new video and it is a wonderful day to make a video the youtube has been going strong i appreciate all of the support and i also announced a new partnership i have now partnered with pair of thieves they make amazing apparel i was wearing some of their clothes yesterday and i'll be wearing them in videos to come but check them out guys you'll be hearing more about them very soon but without further ado let's get into it all right guys so what makes a call of duty map great why are some maps considered great and some maps bad? In theory, some of these maps should be good in some games and they just they just don't play out that well. So let's talk a little bit about some of the best maps in Call of Duty history and why they were special. All right, so I kind of refer to Black Ops 2 as the gold standard of Call of Duty competitive maps. Uh, I thought that the maps were great for public player matches and they were also great for competitive gameplay. And uh, I'm going to be showing you guys various clips uh, to further explain why these maps played out great. Uh, there were some great maps in uh, Call of Duty Ghosts. There were some good maps back in Black Ops 1 and in COD 4. And throughout the history of COD, every game has had its share of good maps. But over the last few years, we've had some very tough maps to play on, to be quite frank. They haven't been that good overall. We've had maybe one or two good maps in the last three or four games. And we are used to having some great maps and some great gameplay uh, and these maps usually cater to the competitive side of things. Uh, but that has fallen off a bit, and I'm hoping in Black Ops Cold War that this changes. Typically, Treyarch makes some solid maps. I mean, you think back to Black Ops 3, we had maps like Infection that were good, maps like Stronghold for Hardpoint that were solid, and it did have its fair share of tough maps, but usually Treyarch is on the right path. So let's talk a little bit about it. So this is all my opinion, but these are the things that I believe the pro community would agree with as well. Uh, for a competitive map, there's one thing that Call of Duty has been consistently doing that I do not agree with. So when you have a three lane map, right? Usually most of the competitive maps are three lane maps, which is a good thing. But a lot of these lanes, they have been layered. So it'll be like a lower side of the map, a middle side, and then an upper side, which I don't exactly agree with. Uh, I mean, if you think about World War II, you had maps like Gibraltar, who that was sort of a three lane map, but it had too many giant layers and it didn't work out well. When you have too many power positions or buildings that you can go to second or third floors on, on each lane, it doesn't work out that well, especially with all the rooms that you can go in and out. It doesn't make for fluid gameplay because a team needs to be able to control these lanes. When you set up on a hill, you need to be able to execute properly and be able to control the area that you're in. One player should be able to control one side of a map so he can correctly lock it down. And in a lot of Call of Duties, that hasn't been a thing. If you think back to games like Black Ops 2, on Raid, on Standoff, on any of these maps, on slums, the reason they were so competitive in that three lane aspect was because if one player went to blue on slums, he could hold down that entire side of the map if he played it correctly. If he went to mid map on raid, or if he went to first hard point on raid, there were positions that he could hold down and play to the best of his ability that widened the skill gap. Positioning was really important back in the day in Call of Duty. In Ghost and in Black Ops 2, your positioning was everything. As a main AR, or even as a sub player, when you're pushing out of a hill or main AR, when you're setting up on a hill, your positioning could lock down an entire lane. And in recent Call of Duties, that has not been a thing. And there's been a lot of elements that have added to that. Uh, but mainly, I think that it has been the maps. And I get the movement when two players slide out at you is very difficult to hold down. But if you think to even Black Ops 4, on all of the maps, if you tried to go hold down one lane, even if they were three lanes, there were a bunch of doorways and they were multi-leveled. So even if you were in position on a hill that was superior to the opponent, he could pull up and be in a heady right away. Uh, you think about a map like Seaside where they can slide up straight to a heady on the first hard point. We're on the left side in wine where there's all those barrels where the players can slide around and pretty much gun you out of your position. It was just very difficult to lock down these lanes. Now, I know that the developers are on the right path when creating these maps. And if you look at it from an overhead view, it makes a lot of sense. But the gameplay doesn't exactly translate to the game. So that's one aspect, right? Like the multi-leveled three lane map. I mean, simplicity works best, right? So in Call of Duty, the best maps in the history of COD, they've looked great, but they've also been simple. There hasn't been too many positions of power and the lanes have been pretty narrow. I mean, there shouldn't be more than three entrances to a hill at max. Uh, if you look at some of the best hills in the history of Call of Duty and Hardpoint, it's been three entrances to the hill maximum. And if you push out far enough and you get enough kills, you're able to pretty much eliminate two of those entrances, right? So that is where success is in Call of Duty maps. If you're able to 
make a hill and a map so fluid to where a player can push out after successfully killing off the first or second wave and lock down multiple entrances to said hill then you're going to get fluid gameplay then the opponent has to find a way to execute their push to kill you and then the teammates out of the hill it shouldn't be as easy as okay we're going to slide up here we have four people no matter what this guy is dead he should have positioning he should be he should have the advantage for being there early for being in the hill and setting up that's when i think call of duty is at its best when teams are executing their strategy and whatever team does it better ends up winning the game lately it's really been sort of a cheese fest with people just sliding around challenging jumping out at people with their numbers and the player with positioning even if he's gotten there early he doesn't reap the benefit and the way i learned how to play call of duty and the way i like to play call of duty i just don't think that that is the way to go now sort of to give you guys an example of all the information i just threw at you because i believe visual aid is better than just me talking about it let's look at this game from complexity versus impact games three and four of the grand final of uh anaheim 2013 this is actually just game four this is slums and this is a perfect example of a team having to push out the spawn gain control and then push out and since the map isn't multi-layered on each level players can lock down certain aspects of the map and go on sprees if the other team is making mistakes they are going to lock down this time and as you can see here that is exactly what happens you're going to see crim six push all the way around the right side with this team they're going to get control of the back they're going to get the hill and they're going to push up to blue and pretty much lock down all of this time and i just think that this is the perfect example so let's take a look at how a great hard point on a great call of duty works Aches, uh, pick, uh, pick, he's on a roll he's there on his lightning strike I, I mean this guy is on fire here i mean you got to stay on top of him i love what, what Aix is allowed what? to do as well what? he's got the war what? machine to open this game how can we not go full screen with this guy right now absolutely ripping it up and here we go He's got the War Machine out, but he's finally taken down. They hold it though, Complexity is flooding Brickside. I can't believe Aix is 12 and 4. He's still on fire, 65 to 29. A forward piece, he picks out every single person for impact. Complexity is on a roll. They're gonna hold this hard point down. The anchor set up. Wow. They've got this all good to go. Aix picks up another kill. Crimsic's gonna grab one as well. And the Complexity squad is on fire. Just seven more seconds for complexity. Aches on a six kill spree. Two, one, boom! Okay guys, another one I wanted to talk about is a map from the Call of Duty Championships in 2013, Envy versus Fariko Impact. A lot of you guys remember this as being the greatest Call of Duty match of all time. I still think that it is the number one game ever in call of duty history just such a competitive and entertaining match you guys should definitely check it out if you have it or if you're new to call of duty but this is a great example of a hill that doesn't have too many entrances it's not doing too much and you can see envy here they rotate all the way from garage all the way through water into basketball court and there's only two entries into the hill the spawns make sense it's up top and down low and they're in a constant battle back and forth to hold control of the hill now trophies are being used tacticals are being used the meta here is on point and you can see envy do a fantastic job of holding it down even fighting from a disadvantage from being down low now that team up top is spawning closer but envy is doing such a good job from the hill because there aren't too many entrances that they're able to lock it down right so even if you're coming from the bad side you should be able to lock it down if you're getting the immense amount of kills and in these current games there are way too many entrances into these hills and too many lanes so it becomes very difficult right like the team that is getting the good spawn they could go window they could win the fights and get control so they have an opportunity but envy does a great job of stopping them from getting inside and i just think that it is strategy on strategy and envy is executing it better here in this hill and this is a great example of how hills should work envy not allowing Perico to get back in this Two minutes remaining in this hard point raid on board with Stainville. He's going to try and step on the next hard point, cooking that nade. Is there going to be someone in this room? No, there isn't. Envy could now have some early control. Trophy system is going to go down as well. Look how close this nice scoreline is going to be. Though. This is a very, very good setup now for Envy. They need to rack up as many points as possible because Farico are on a hype. They have been playing so well. They've managed to come back into this game. But Envy need to try and prevent them from getting any points on this hard point. Oh, Proofy with a two piece. He is holding it down. The basketball court is oh. his. Oh, Michael Jordan up in this oh, place. He's got another one. Oh, no. Good 
goodness, what a monster, but his team is still there to hold it down. Envy earning the points in this hard point. 30 seconds left. They are on a roll here for Rico, just trying to get in there. And finally, for Rico able to take over this hard point. They needed to do that badly. They really did, but Proofy, important to note, he picked up all three of his score streaks on that mad rampage on this hard point. And right now, Rico just trying to rack up a few points. Now there's only 60 points remaining in this game. Can Rico make the biggest comeback of their life? What an amazing matchup. We are going to a game 11, Benson. You couldn't ask for anything better here at the Call of Duty Championship. All right, so let's talk about Search and Destroy here for a second, right? So in Search and Destroy, defense should be massively advantageous you should have the massive advantage when you are on defense on offense you have to plant the bomb you have to push up and get that bomb down and detonate that or kill all of the opponents you should have to work for it and in these call of duties the bombs have been located close to the offense i mean i think about gunrunner the bomb was facing the offensive spawn if you got it down you would pretty much win the game i mean it just it doesn't make sense to me the way that uh, search and destroy has changed over time offense getting to bombs quicker than defense it just doesn't make sense in my mind and i think that freight is a fantastic example of ghost i think ghost is the best snd game we've ever had go watch search and destroy from 2014 and ghost it is incredible the different aspects of the meta and just the maps worked great for search but if you look at this gameplay i'm about to show you you can see here it was optic versus complexity at the cod championships in 2014 optic was on offense complexity had the advantage on defense and you see optic whipping out all the stops they're wall banging inside of red they're throwing smokes they're pushing together they have to really really work for that first kill or that second kill trade to get control and make a play and that is how defense should be played you should have options but it shouldn't be in your favor you should be at a disadvantage so these guys, you can go for a quick bomb, you can wall bang, try to get inside, you can stun and use your tacticals to gain an advantage. You should have to do something proactively to gain an edge on an offensive round. And that has not been a thing in Call of Duty over the last few years. It seems like it's been TDM inside of Search and Destroy. And I don't think that is how Search is supposed to be played. It gets rid of strategy and it uh, closes that skill gap. So you can see here in a game where you had to proactively do stuff to gain control and search and destroy that there is a bigger skill gap in search and you can guarantee your s and d's and not to boast myself up a little bit but my team we were really good at that and we ended up winning like 20 search and destroys in a row in season two because of that skill gap that will no longer happen teams will not be able to win 20 30 searches in a row because that skill gap is so small because of the way the maps are set up in search and destroy now movement and stuff adds a little bit to that but i believe the ma the major aspect has been the maps so let's check out this clip he switches out to that LMG. lmg he's so lethal with the lmg and i love that strategy but is it going to work against complexity because complexity is that kind of team that can just adapt almost instantly and i'm surprised ember's going for the warbang there not clay and, and you see him he leads the charge with that grenade that's going to force the player to move and then lines up to where he thinks he's going to get the shot there we go that's Wall the warbang from clayster can he find a player he's hunting everywhere nice positioning <laughs> As Complexity knows what he wants to do, they're just going to move a little bit out of the normal positions and stay alive here. Yeah, that, that's the key. They just need to make sure they're not in a... Uh, Scuffy sort of picked by Aix, though. That's a good start for Aix. And the wallbang's going to come in from Clayster. He's so weak, and the bullet's flying past him. He has got out alive, though. And Complexity with the advantage now. Does TP see this player on the other side of the train? Meanwhile, at red, you see the rotation here from Optic. They're pushing up very aggressively on A. Crim6. Going up against Embo's and Nade Shot, or excuse me, Clayster. Now, Embo's dropped as he tries to get up top. Clayster's going to fall as well. Round we 11. are going into round 11. Well, all right, guys. I appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully, you learned a little bit uh, from my babbling and explanation. Uh, but I hope Cold War can live up to the hype of Treyarch. Uh, obviously, in Black Ops 4, they dropped the ball a little bit with maps. But so far, we have a few maps in this beta that I think are very promising. I think Moscow can be a very solid map, and I'm excited for the future. But anyways, there is going to be way more episodes of this series. So if you enjoyed and you want to see more, leave a like and leave a comment and let me know what you would like to see. If there's anything that I missed, I love taking a blast through the past, and I love enlightening you folks. So thank you guys very much, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.